Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Today is the third and final episode of my little mini series on the spook. Today I'm gonna be talking about equipment. My entire system, what I do, little modifications that I make to the bait. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. First, I'm gonna go through my rod, reel, and line, and then I'm gonna talk about the lure specifically. Before we get into the video, guys, this video is brought to you by the Bass Hack. Click the link below in the description. You can pick one up and help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. But let's first talk about the reel. And I use a number of different reels, but the biggest thing that I think is important for you to know is that you want a higher speed reel when you're fishing a topwater. Anything over that seven one to one gear ratio, even up to the eight one to ones or even higher is gonna be exactly what you want and here's the reason most of the time when you're fishing a spook style bait you're really working the bait with the rod not the reel specifically one of the best times to spook is whenever you're seeing fish that are blowing up if they're blowing up maybe it's the middle of summer they're feeding on shad they're feeding on bait fish guys if you have your lure out in this direction and you have a fish blowing up over in this direction you have got to be able to get that lure in in as quick as possible and fire on that fish while it's active. It can literally mean the difference between catching a fish and not catching a fish when it comes to having a higher speed gear ratio. You don't want a low speed. You don't want a 5.4 to 1, a 6.1 to 1. You want a high speed gear ratio reel to be able to get to a fish as soon as it starts blowing up. Super, super critical, super, super important part. You also want a reel that casts really far. There's a number of reels that are out there on the market that casts really well. I've used a lot of Daiwa products in the past and I love the Daiwa CTs and the SVs, but this year I've been using the Akuma Helios SX reel. This is kind of their top of the line reel and I'm telling you what, this reel is a straight up baller. It casts extremely far. And one of the, my favorite things about this reel is the handle. It has this EVA foam grip type handles, the bigger handle. I absolutely love this reel. I've got several of them, 11 ball bearings, eight to one gear ratio, perfect reel for your top water. All right guys, so let's talk about your rod. And your rod is probably one of the most important parts of this entire system. And to me guys, I really want a rod that is very comfortable for me to use all day long. Something that's not gonna wear me out. When it comes to that, I really like a seven foot or a seven foot one, right in that length, but a seven foot medium action rod. I really like a parabolic bending rod when I'm using a top water. Now, the reason I like that seven foot rod is kind of like what I was saying earlier. It's very comfortable for me to use all day long when I'm fishing. You can probably get a little bit longer cast by using a seven foot three, a seven foot six inch rod, but having a rod that's that long is kind of a lot of leverage on your hand. Because you're typically working a spook fairly fast cadence going choo choo walking the dog having that seven foot action is to me is a must it's extremely comfortable in my hand i can cast extremely far still with it i really like that parabolic bending medium action rod whenever i'm fishing top water and that's because i typically am using braided line and we'll get into line here in a second but guys with that braided line i can cast extremely far but the thing is is when you're fighting a fish you have zero stretch in that line and so if a fish, you know, a small mouth, a spotted bass, even a large mouth, if they get really close to the boat and they make that one final surge, you guys know that surge that I'm talking about. You don't want to have zero stretch. You got to have somewhere that kind of gives. So that's why I like that medium action rod because it's going to give when that fish is really close and that way I'm not going to tear the hooks out of that fish. So guys, a seven foot, a seven foot one medium action rod. Uh, the rod that I specifically use, this is the Akuma TCS rod. This is their crankbait jerkbait rod. Again, it's seven Seven foot length, medium action. It's perfect for what I like to do when it comes to spook fishing. All right, guys, so let's talk about your line. And to me, there's really two different lines that somebody can use in their top water fishing. You have braided line and you have monofilament. The reason why you don't want to use fluorocarbon is simply because fluorocarbon sinks. So if you make a long cast with fluorocarbon line, that bait is not going to work right. It's going to want to dive underneath the water and it's just really not going to work right. So monofilament and braided line is what I typically like to use. I am typically actually using both. And the way that I like to do it is I use 30 pound braided line for my main line. Guys, I love to use braid because I can get an extremely 
long cast, which again, like I talked about earlier, when you're fishing for schooling fish, getting that long cast is a must. To be able to land on that fish when it's blowing up is something that you want to have. So braided line, that 30 pound test is a super small diameter. I can cast this thing a stinking mile. Now, the other thing that I like about using that braided line is that if I make an extremely long cast, I have a great feel of the bait and when that fish actually hits the bait I can feel everything very very well with braid if you have a super long cast with monofilament a fish could actually hit your bait and actually get the bait and you can hardly feel it because of there's so much stretch in monofilament so that is why I like to use braided line usually when I'm using a walking bait I'm making those long casts now sometimes if I use like a pop bar style bait really shallow and then really tight quarters I'll go to straight monofilament then but when I'm using a spook I like 30 pound braid and here's the thing I'm gonna always connect my braided line to a very short monofilament leader guys if you can see this I have about a foot and a half of monofilament at the top of my bait and I like this for a number of different reasons one it acts as that little bit more of give like I talked about earlier if that fish makes a surge I do have a little bit of stretch in this line just a little bit of extra cushion to make sure I don't lose that fish the other thing that I really like about using the monofilament leader is that this, if you use straight braid, you can do it, but sometimes what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a long bomb cast and that braid is actually gonna get hung around your hooks and it's gonna make for very frustrating fishing because you're gonna make this giant cast and your bait is gonna be all fouled up. It's not gonna work right. You're gonna miss fish because of it. But guys, simply putting this monofilament leader, and I typically like using 20 pound monofilament. I do not think that you need to go anything lower than that. You could go 15 if you wanted, but I suggest using a heavier monofilament. I use 20 pound monofilament, and guys, it works perfectly. This monofilament is a little bit more taut. So like I said, that's why it never gets hung in your hooks. All right guys, so that is my rod, reel, and line system it works extremely extremely well for me now let's talk about the bait I don't do a whole lot of modifications to the baits that I get I have a number of different spook style baits and and guys if you want to know the four favorite spooks that I have I'll link the video above and below that I made which is the first one of this series about spooks where I kind of go a little bit more in depth about what spooks I like and where I like to fish them the one thing that I am always going to do to my spook style baits is change the hooks. Change the hooks, change the hooks, never use stock hooks. There's two style hooks that I actually really like. And one is the KVD Mustad Triple Grips. When a fish is eating a topwater really, really well, like when they're absolutely crushing it, I use the Mustad Triple Grips. It's a little bit thicker hook, so you might need to kind of give that fish a little bit more power when you set the hook. The other bait that I use probably about 75% of the time though is the Berkley Fusion treble hooks. I love this, this round bend treble hook. It's extremely sharp. The thing that I also love about it is it comes with a feather. I always, always, always add a feather to my spook style baits on the back. I literally believe it's the difference between catching fish and not sometimes. I've seen it with my own eyes. And guys, they, the Berkley Fusions come with feathered trebles. I typically am using a number four size treble hook round bend on my bigger top waters. Sometimes I have to go up to a number two and sometimes I have to go down to like a number six on a pop R style bait. That's it though, that is my spook fishing rod and reel equipment. I really think that with this system, you guys are gonna be able to cast further, you're gonna be able to hook up with more fish, you're gonna be able to keep more fish buttoned and get more fish in the boat. There's nothing else that you can ask for. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like it, please give me a thumbs up, please comment below if you have a question, and please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.